Well, welcome to the Friday Bubble. We've got two rosés to tell you about today from Champagne Tattinger. Um, how do we tell the difference? Well, I've given myself a little post-it note on the back. This is all about an evolution. Um, Tattinger non-vintage rosé has just subtly shifted. So we're going to explore this really exciting change. Um, we've got all the facts. In fact, there's many facts um, to try and share with you during this tasting. For those who don't know, Champagne Tattinger is a family-owned business. Um, they own quite a substantial holding of vineyards, some 288 hectares across the region. So they're one of the biggest um, vineyard owners. Since 2019, uh, the new generation, Vitali Tattinger, has taken over the business and her brother, Clovis, um, helps run the, the company. Really exciting. They've very recently also um, certified their vineyards. So they're both, um, all of their vineyards are certified HVESE. And yes. how important is that? Because I think sustainability is becoming more important to people who buy champagnes. Oh yes, I mean, yeah, the region has done a big, uh, big job to get everyone on board getting those uh, sustainability certificates. So I think it's really integral for the future. So, um, Tatum de Rose, as we've um, known it always, this is the style that is um, probably selling through the market at the moment. So you should um, perhaps get yourself a bottle. Um, how you're going to tell the new style, I don't know, but I suspect uh, there'll be some colour differences. Yeah, I think we already see some colour differences on these, on these bottles. I see more uh, yellow, more copper tone on the old one. Of course, that's also because the base wine is actually two years older, but here it's more, more um, red in colour. Now, Esther, tell us quickly about the two different ways rosé is made. Yes, so you can make a rosé in champagne either by, by blending uh, red uh, wine of champagne to the white base or then by the, the maceration method. Right. Most wines of champagne would be done uh, with the with blending method, as is this uh, the Tanger as well. So depending on the style you want, depending on your system of maceration, um, um, it would usually be um, between 5 and 18% uh, red wine what is needed to, to give the wine its color. And as we can see, Tetanger is from uh, the more darker, uh, more bigger um, percentages of, of uh, red wine. So in the first uh, wine, what we have is 16%. Right, so they're quite different. So the base vintages, um, so they're both non-vintage. Um, with non-vintages, they're always made from a dominant year. So the old style, we're gonna call it for now, is based on 2017. And the, the one that's coming into the market as we speak is based on 2019, hugely different vintages. Mm. Um, well, yes, great expectations for the 19 from, from that point of view as well. But yes, they have for their non-vintage as well, but for the rosé too, um, they've a little bit uh, changed the use of, of reserve wines. Right. Uh, so both of them, in both of them actually, it's 2012, that is the oldest reserve wine right. in use. Um, but still for this 17 base, they used the preceding vintages, whereas for this uh, new one, they only started to use the, the, the base wines when they were a little bit older. Right. So I think it was 2014 being the, the, the youngest reserve wine component in this one. So I think this could be bring a little bit more this sort of de depth okay. and uh, complexity to the cuvee. But I think here the most exciting part is differences in the in the use of the, the red wine component. Right. Uh, because Tetanger have since 2015 really um, started to develop their red wine making process. And of course, the most important part of that would be the vineyards. So they've now established uh, certain vineyards in four different villages. Right. So Ambonnet, they were famously, you know, uh -huh. Comte de Champagne uh, Rosé. It's famously the red wine coming from Ambonnet. Uh, but uh, they have now four different vineyards um, in Ambonnet with different, um, obviously, viticulture as well um, for red wine um, making specifically. But then also they have established plots in Verzenet. Right. Uh, Lerice and Ovilair, so right. this should give them a nice, nice uh, broad uh, base of different uh, red wine components um, to work with. 
all being 100% uh, Pinot Noir. No Merlot Rosé or red wine. When I was with SE earlier in the year, we always go to Tattinger, as, as with many other houses, and taste um, Van Clairs, so the still wines from the previous vintage. We were lucky enough, actually, to taste the red wines. Mm. Um, so we tasted the still red wine components. And I, I do remember Alexander making a point about the, the, the evolution that they're taking the red wine component on. So it's going to be fascinating. I've just had a little aromatic check. Yeah. Hugely different. Huge, huge. But we have to think that this wine has two Jesus. years extra bottle right. age as well. So okay. that's one part of the difference. But I think also part of the difference already in the color is that before they used to use, you know, the um, uh, red wines of the year, but also right. uh, uh, red wines from the reserve from okay. previous years. And now it's really only red wines of the, year, of the year, which would give a brighter, fruitier expression without this sort of, you know, red wines turning a bit sort of animally spicy okay. over time. So I think that will make a big, uh, big difference. I think you've actually just described <laughs> What's in that glass? Yeah, yeah. And you haven't had a chance yeah. to um, to taste them yet. Just some little quick statistics while I give Essie a chance to um, to taste them. So both of these blends, and I think it's classically Tattinger Rosé stays like this, is 30% Chardonnay, 25% uh, Mounier, and 45% uh, Pinot Noir. Uh, the red wine component is only Pinot Noir, so that'll be a percentage of that 45. And in the... Um, in the new blend, it's 14% of red wine is added. In the previous blend, it's 16%. And I, I do remember that um, with the diversification of, of plots from Bersenay, Aupillier and Le Risse, that it, it, it has brought a, a more serious red, um, which is why they don't need as much of it. So, Essie, what are you seeing in the two wines? Yes, they are really different. Um, I, I'd say that um, if, if I have to say style-wise, I'm thinking that the first one is more old-fashioned, mm -hmm. uh, whereas the, the, the second one is really contemporary. I love that expression of fruit uh, in it. It's very delicious. Right. Uh, but both are have you know big red wine impact on them. Uh, both still to me more in that sort of gastronomic uh, was a style rather than, than the sort of light aperitif. Uh, um, field. Yeah, I think that um, I like especially the, the feeling of the tannin uh, in the in the the new version um, because here you know the the tannin at the end you can feel right. the bite a little bit but here yeah. it's totally the fruit first and there's a little bit of supporting tannin there. The juiciness there, mm. yeah. And of course, 2017 is the dominant year in the in the old style. Um, it was a real challenge for um, Pinot Noir in 2017. So I think that rosé is, is showing pretty well for that being the dominant year. I do love the juicy fruit. I think it, it's really simple to, to see that. So really nice um, evolution has been happening here. Uh, I'll pick up one little, little just um, technical thing. Clear bottles. Um, it does actually look rather beautiful. It's, it's not very good for the champagne. So these have been in a, in a, in a box in the fridge to protect them from we call light strike so it's unique to sparkling wines they they don't like daylight or artificial light unless it's a very particular frequency of yellow um, light so we always recommend anything in a clear bottle that's sparkling please protect it from the light and maybe some of the houses over time will start to put these in darker bottles as well essie your um you're going to take, we always do this choice of what are we having at lunch. I think I probably know this one. Yes, I think you probably do. So it's, of course, the new one. Well, I think Alexander has done a, a brilliant job, the winemaker at um, Tattinger. He's, are we going to call it, he has made an evolution and fine-tuned it. And I think rather beautifully. Yeah, gorgeous. Cheers. Thank you, Essie. And um, I hope you can enjoy a glass of rosé this weekend.